a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everybody. The Cleveland International Film Festival runs through April the 3rd. Its artistic director, Bill Gensler, is here to tell us what we can expect this year. Then Dwayne Cheeks will share information later on with us about the upcoming Jazz Elixir Concert Series, Jazz in Cleveland. And later in the broadcast, the president of the North Coast Unit of the Parliamentarians, Laura Womack, will talk about parliamentary procedures and the upcoming parliamentary conference. Good morning again. This is Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Bibb. And so we begin. Beginning with artistic director of the Cleveland International Film Festival, Bill Gensler. Good to see you, Bill. Good to see you. It's that time of the year. It is. It seems like yesterday that it was last festival, but it's Film back festival around. time of the year for Cleveland. Yeah, t tell me about this year's festival. Uh, this year's festival, uh, it's our 35th anniversary, uh, so it's really something that we're celebrating this year. Uh, we have 152 feature films, 133 short films, representing 60 countries. Uh, and uh, one great thing that we're doing this year is we're taking over all of Tower City Cinema. So we can use all of their theaters um, because last year we had record-breaking crowds. Uh, since yeah. 2003, we've increased by 103 percent. 103 percent in yeah. a handful of years. Exactly. Um, and then uh, last year we had over 71,000 people to come to the festival. So we just want to make sure yeah. that more people are able to come down and see some great yeah. films. You brought with you the book. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what to call it, the catalog or the schedule. Yes. I suppose. Yes. The schedule of all these movies. How many movies again are are are, are you having in this thing? Um, um, uh, close to 300, 152 features, and 133 shorts. And they're all described in that book. What is different about the Cleveland International Film Festival when we when we talk about films? What is it that you try to do with it? Um, we, we really try to tie it with the community. We're one of the rare film festivals, I mean, just being in Cleveland and uh, being more of an audience festival. We're not about, all about the industry and the movie stars or mm -hmm. any, any kind of red carpet. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about tying to the community and playing films that really mean something to the people that are going to see it. And so what we've been doing for the past few years is partnering with other local organizations, nonprofits, and um, that their mission ties with one of the films that we're showing. And this year we have 105 community partners, and we started with one back mm -hmm. about six years ago. Karamu is your community, one of your community yes. partners this year. Tell us about that relationship. It's, it's a, we're partnering with a film uh, called Desert Flower, which is about an Ethiopian woman who has to leave Ethiopia because she's abused and she's married off. And she goes and leaves and ends up being a supermodel. Um, and she takes her her fame to um, to be a UN spokesperson mm -hmm. against female circumcision and the, the mm -hmm. horrors that are happening to women in Ethiopia. And these things are happening exactly. in parts of the world. Exactly. These kinds of atrocities are happening in the world. So, yep. so uh, these films speak, they say something. Yes. Yes. You get a message in these films. Exactly. It's not just buildings being blown up by superheroes exactly. or anything like that. Not exactly. that there's anything wrong with that, no, it's, but th that, that's fine, too. Yeah. But this goes... Yeah. a little deeper than that. Yeah, and the fact that we are the Cleveland International Film Festival, mm -hmm. we're showing films that mean something to um, a public. You know, we do still have comedies, and we have, you know, we have a mix of yeah. everything, something for everybody at the film festival. Um, but we really hope that, you know, part, our mission is education and exhibition. And we say education first because we really hope mm -hmm. that you're able to learn something from the films that we play. Cleveland International Film Festival runs through uh, April the uh, April the third and at, at Tower City. Yes. Ongoing. It started on the March the twenty fourth yes. and going all the way to April April the third. Uh, this has done something for this city. Cleveland is making its mark when it comes to film, yeah. isn't it? Which is great. Speak I mean, to that a little bit. Well, we have the film festival. Cleveland's always been a great film-going community. Mm -hmm. And then now with the Film Commission bringing more films in uh, to be shot here, um, we're, you know, we don't work exactly together, but we're helping each other because we're bringing in directors from around the world with the films that we're showing. They're seeing how great Cleveland is and seeing our architecture and just how great our people are um, that live in Cleveland that um, for Ivan Schwartz of the Cleveland yeah. Cle Film Commission, yeah. it's easier for him to bring films here, and hopefully the film community grows and grows and grows. Well, you know, Hollywood started very small. Exactly. I mean, Hollywood was just a, a, a nowhere place yeah. when a few people orange went out groves. there and says so it was orange groves, mm -hmm. and, and said, we're going to start something out here, start making films, because yeah. we got a lot of wide open space. Yeah. And Hollywood, well, maybe we can do that yeah. same thing yeah. here in Cleveland. Bring, bring them back yeah. from Cal California. What, what keeps you going in this? What do you like about <laughs> 
at the International Film Festival? Um, I think it's, I mean, I see a lot of films, which is great. I mean, part of the, uh, the, the my job is to travel around and see a lot of movies. Last year, I saw 606 films. Uh, <laughs> Say that again now. 606 films uh, since La the last In one year. In you, one you, year. You live in theaters. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I travel around to other film festivals. Yeah, I'm going to London or wherever, and yeah. it's, but I'm sitting in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it seems great, but I'm watching a lot of films. So that's great. Um, and the fact that I'm able to bring films to Cleveland and um, really see an audience reaction mm -hmm. and have it mean something to people. Now, where do these films come from? I mean, all over the place. Uh, I mean, like I said, we're it's uh, the films represent 60 countries, um, and you know there, we have an Eastern European competition because of Cleveland's makeup, you know, the ethnic diversity mm -hmm. here. So we have a competition for that. We have a competition for documentaries, and then a competition for standing up. Uh, the Greg Gunn Memorial Standing Up Film Competition is all about social justice, mm -hmm. activism, and things that uh, films that have a conscience. Now, where can people get the schedule now? Because this is this, we can't talk about every film. But yeah, exactly. Where can people get this the, this the schedule? Here? They're all over the place. Uh, we we tried to throw them all over the city. So these <laughs> coffee houses, uh, any place that you see like you know magazines and things like that, you can pick them up, or you can go to our website, clevelandfilm.org. Every, and everything, everything's uh, everything's there. everything's in here. And yeah. let's go to clevelandfilm.org, clevelandfilm.org, or you can call six two three thirty four fifty six, and people can, there can answer your questions about. Where to find where to find this exactly uh, this virtually everywhere yeah <laughs> including our lobby yeah, exactly okay, that's where I grabbed find. that one. Oh, yeah. Good to see you Bill Gensler who's artistic director for the Cleveland International Film Festival we will see you at the movies yes. between now and April the third yep save a seat on the aisle for me I will thank you Bill great Good to, to see you my friend <laughs> I'm going to take a break I'll be right back we're going to talk to Dwayne Cheeks about a new jazz concert series if you like jazz as do I you'll like what we're going to talk about next back in a hot moment. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope. The Jazz Elixir concert series is being launched in Cleveland. Its coordinator is Dwayne Cheeks, and he's here, here today to talk about his efforts in bringing this new jazz series to the city of Cleveland. Hey, Dwayne. Well, thank you for having me on the program, oh, Leon. Good to see you, my friend. Good to Same see you. Same here. Yeah, t tell me, what is Jazz Elixir Concert Series? Well, what it is, is an opportunity for a lot of the local jazz musicians here to play in a, in a venue that we've, we've created Mm -hmm. that combines three elements. And these are the elements that you'll find that are common in any successful jazz country, mm -hmm. uh, successful jazz club across the country. And they are atmosphere and atmos atmosphere and ambience, mm -hmm. right? Incredible food and fantastic jazz. And what we've done, we put those all three together. You put now, that together, you've got something. Right, right. In fact, it's, a, it's been a joint venture between Chester Tucker and myself. Now, I have a, had a long history of doing jazz mm -hmm. concerts here in uh, Greater Cleveland. In fact, you did some things for me back at the Beck Center yeah. and uh, Cleveland Playhouse uh -huh. well, years ago. Uh -huh. Now, where's all of this taking place? It's taking place at Chester's Jazz and Blues Club, which is at 1990 mm -hmm. Noble Road, yeah. right across the street from the GE Neal Park plant. Where a lot of lights are flashing Correct. at Christmas time. And a Absolutely. lot of lights are flashing anyway because there's GE. But across the street, there's a lot of jazz. It's flashing too. Correct. Absolutely. What do you want people to, to understand about, about, about Jazz Elixir? And as I, as I hold up this placard here that you brought with some of the people who are going to be performing, what do you want people to understand about jazz? Well, you know, jazz is one of America's greatest treasures. It's been a world ambassador for decades. And what we're attempting to do is just give people an opportunity to come and enjoy it in a very relaxing uh, environment. Something you know, that's very, let's say, comfortable. Something that's been designed specifically for their needs. Mm -hmm. And even, even more, we want to get, we want to get feedback from individuals here in Cleveland mm -hmm. who appreciate jazz and want more of it. Yeah. Presently, we only have Nighttown, yeah. and we have, say, like a regular jazz program. Now, we're not going to be a restaurant. It has jazz as background music. We are a jazz club. You are going to be a jazz club. Now, you know there's a lot of jazz followers out there who've Absolutely. been waiting for a full-time, around-the-clock, so to speak, jazz club. Yes, yes. And what we're doing, we're, we're being, let's say, somewhat guarded and, um, um, initially, meaning that we're going to expand the programming as the program warrants it. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got to mix up. Uh, uh, your, your placard says sinfully delicious food, ambiance and service beyond compare, and incredibly hot 
and cool jazz. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, that is uh, pretty much our credo, yeah. a moniker, mm -hmm. and our, a mantra. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've always said about jazz, it is both hot and cool, and I mean both at the same time. And something you know else, too. I mean. You'll be able to see, like, lineups that you can't see anywhere else. What I've done, I've, I've taken, say, called musicians that I know. Mm -hmm. We put together some groups that in, in formats that they normally don't play in. Yeah. Meaning, for instance, like on Sunday, March 27th, I think the day this program is airing, we're going to do something with an Evelyn Wright. Now, Evelyn usually plays a lot with Dave Thomas, yeah. but we mm -hmm. invited John Morton, who's another vocalist, mm -hmm. to join her that day. See, so they'll see John and, and Evelyn, and they normally you know, can't see that. I'm doing something with er Ernie Krivda on Friday, April 1st. The, now, great, si the great saxophonist, right. tenor saxophonist. Right. Cri Krivda has his own group, mm -hmm. but for this, he'll be joining uh, our rhythm session, and we also have con um, added a trumpet player mm -hmm. by the name of Benny Mas uh, Mastella, mm -hmm. who's going to be joining them as well. There was a place called 52nd Street in, in New York many, many years ago, way back when, when the bebop revolution really began in the late 1940s and early 1950s, and it turned that whole street, it made that Correct. whole street pulse and jump. Right. You see this is happening at Chester's Jazz and Blues Club at 1990 Noble Road uh, with, with the, uh, the coming of Jazz Elixir? Right. In, in fact, uh, our, our ambition is to do this. Take it and make it something that you can't get anywhere else in Northeast Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I think we're on the road to doing that. I'm going to put a phone number on the screen if we've not already done so. It is 921-2161. You can get more information on everything that Dwayne Cheeks of the Jazz Elixir Concert Series is talking about. How long do you see this is going on? Is this going to be an ongoing It's, it's going to be an, it's an ongoing uh, series. Mm -hmm. Right now, the material that we're putting out, is, it has dates for March and April. Mm -hmm. But... Already, I have in place a concert on on Friday, May 20th, yeah. and Friday, May 13th, and I'm looking at putting together the packages for June now. Yeah. So we're looking at Friday and Saturday nights at seven o'clock. Sundays at four o'clock, right? Right. When we do those events, right? When we do these events, right. and tickets are ten dollars. Tickets are ten dollars. Can you pay at the door? You can pay at the door. You but we're, we're suggesting that people say call and make reservations. And the reason why I say that is this: we have seating for 103 people, mm -hmm. and the response has been very good. And this way, you will be guaranteed an opportunity to come. Certainly, but certainly on through the month of April, we're Correct. going to be doing this series. Correct. Yeah. And, and something else, too. You can pay for your tickets at the I mean, by calling the club uh, with, a, with a major credit card. Yeah, and that's at 921-2161. No, no, no. no the, 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 the club number is 451-2073. Uh, so four if you want to call 451-2073, uh -huh. if you want to make reservations at the club. At that, and that's at Chester's. It's called Chester's Jazz and Blues Club, located at 1990 Noble Road, and that's right at the East Cleveland, Cleveland Heights border. That is right, correct. Right near the borderline. Right. Right there in, 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 on, the, on the border of East Cleveland and Cleveland Heights. 1990 Noble Road, Chester's Jazz and Blues Club. So it's going to be going on. We'll be reading more about it, I know. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Right. All right. Many thanks, Dwayne. No, thank you, Leon. You got it going. You got the rhythm and you got the rhyme and you got the jazz. You got the blues. You got it all. Well, there's only one element missing now, Leon. Yeah. And that's you. I'm going to be there. You can count on that. All right. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay, my pleasure. That's a little bit about jazz. I'm going to take a short break. In a moment, we will return. We'll talk about the Mar parliamentarians, the North Coast unit of the parliamentarians. And that's jazz. Back in a moment. in touch with Kaleidoscope. Glad to have you with us today. The president of the, the North Coast Unit of the Parliamentarians, Laura Womack, is here to talk about parliamentary procedures and the need for her organization and the upcoming district conference. Good to have you with us, Laura Womack. Thank you very much. What is the North Coast Unit of Parliamentarians? It's a training unit. Um, we, we have about 24 members. They come to the meeting, we train them how to prepare an agenda, how to handle a uh, business meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, how to move business before an assembly. That's vital, isn't it? It is. You and would think it would be simple, but it's not that simple. No, it's it? not that simple, because when you're attending meetings, let's say, for instance, at a church or any other organization, a person will stand up and say, I'll make a motion. 
We train them to say, I move that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And uh -huh. you train them to realize that there's already a, a, a motion on the floor, then you yes. can't make one while we are talking about something else right Exactly, now. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, can people join your organization to learn yes, about this? Yes, they can. And, and what does it do if they understand, uh, I guess you go by Robert's Rules of Order? Or yes, or we do. Like In that. fact, this is uh, Robert's Rules of Order. This is kind of like the Bible. The, the Bible of, of the organization. And, and, and these are how to run a meeting. How Why to run a meeting. Why is it important to know? how to run a meeting and, and, and how to do things? Because of the members and their responsibility, the rights of the members, um, we need to know uh, what a member can do, what they can't do, and what a presiding officer can do and what they cannot do at a meeting. Mm -hmm. It's very important to know the rights of a member. Now, you've got a big uh, conference coming up. Tell, tell me yes, a little about it while we put Robert's Rules of Order over there. Okay. What, tell me about the conference which is coming up. The conference is called the National Association of Parliamentarians District 4 Conference. The District 4 Conference Director is Patricia Lewis, and she's uh, from Ohio, and this is her last uh, tenure as the director. Mm -hmm. The District 4 Conference consists of five states, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio, and the province of Ontario. And we are planning the conference at the Crown Plaza Hotel, Airport Hotel, April 1st through the 3rd, 2011. Now, what are you going to talk about at this conference? What There's happens when parliamentarians get together? The <laughs> when parliamentarians get to, to get together, they talk about Robert's Rules of Order. In fact, our theme for the conference is Robert Rocks in Cleveland. <laughs> There's going to be a little move and a little motion. I never made thought parliamentarians <laughs> rocking, but I guess parliamentarians can rock. They can. They can rock. In fact, it's going to be two days of... Uh, packed events. In fact, we have workshop topics such as planning your meeting, um, meaningful meetings, oh, incidentally, and of course that's about incidental yeah. motions, yeah. and the art and science of tampering with governance yeah. uh, documents. Now, why is this important when we run meetings and we all go to meetings that sometimes drag on into the night? Why is this, and we say, well, I want this thing move along. Why is it important that we have a parliamentarian or we follow some sort of order? Because it would get definitely out of hand if we did not have guidelines and agenda and a program to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, the presiding officer would go off on a tangent, perhaps, and not follow the uh, the rules. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's very important to have guidelines in an organization. Are you looking for other people to join your organization? Yes, we are, especially North Coast Unit. In fact, we meet the third uh, Monday of each month. Mm -hmm. Well, Laura Womack, let me put a phone number on the screen there okay. where people can get more information. We're going to continue our conversation with Laura Womack, president of the North Coast Unit Parliamentarians. 440-232-2608, as you see at the bottom of the screen. Or you can go to parliamentarians.org and find more information about everything we've been talking about. When Roberts put this together, when Robert put... Robert's Rules of Order, which have been around for, I don't know how long, I want to say many years, many years certainly decades, maybe centuries. When they put them together, it must have been as a result of a meeting that got out of hand and everybody was screaming and yelling and nobody was getting anything. Probably. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, in September of 2011, this year, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, the next edition will be out. It will be available. And in fact, Patricia Lewis, who is the director of yeah. District 4, she's in St. Petersburg, Florida now, planning for that con convention. When, when you ever, do you ever watch C-SPAN and, and watch the nation's Congress do yes. business and we will see the presiding officer at the Senate or on the House say, you're out of order, the gentleman from so-and-so is out of order or mm -hmm. the gentlewoman from so-and-so is out of order. Mm -hmm. That's, they are following Robert's, Robert's rules, rules of order. order. If we did not have that, mm 
would it be chaos in Congress? Total chaos. You have a hundred senators all arguing, all trying to be heard. So that's the reason we have to follow. So yes. even at the smaller levels, at our church organizations or our civic organizations, we have to follow an agenda and some sort of a exactly. procedure. And we also teach you how to write script. Like you have a script? I, yes. Mm -hmm. We're taught how to write scripts. Well, I've got to follow the script now, which says I've got to go to a commercial break. But I, the script also says I have to thank you, Laura Womack, who's thank the president you. of the North Coast Unit Parliamentarians. Thank you, very thank you for being, being with us. Oh, it's good to, good to have you on the broadcast. I'm going to take a break. I'll return. This is a Kaleidoscope. We'll talk to Marsha Maccabee after these words. And with a comment, always something to say, something on her mind, your friend and mine, ladies and gentlemen, the Urban League's Marsha Maccabee, its president and CEO. Hi, Leon. Hey, How Marcia. are you? I'm okay. Good. Leon, I wanted to share something with you that happened uh, about a week ago that uh, really caught my attention. I was uh, coming out of the Renaissance Hotel and coming back from uh, an event there, a luncheon event, and it was raining very hard, so I was getting into a taxi cab, and it was interesting as I was standing at the taxi stand, one of the taxis lined up was blowing his horn very loudly mm -hmm. at one of the guests who was lined up to, you know, get out of the hotel. One of the uh, people who run the hotel came out and really dressed that cab driver down. And what she said to him was, our guests are very important, and we want them to return. You can't be blowing your horn at them and making them very upset. Now, that may seem like a small thing, but what really intrigued me about that is as we look at the medical mart that's coming, the casino that's coming, and all the things that are coming to Cleveland that are going to make us more of a destination city, a new attitude about how we treat visitors to this city is going to be very important. Every one of us has to be an ambassador for Cleveland. Absolutely. Absolutely. From our restaurants mm -hmm. to our hotels to our cab drivers, it's we, going to be important that they have a good experience. We want people to come to Cleveland and say, you know, that's a fine town. I had a great time and everybody was friendly. We certainly do. We mm -hmm. certainly do. And we're seeing just so many. I'm beginning to notice in the restaurants, the training programs now are really focused on customer service. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think we're getting ready. But I think we all need to have that mindset and be very conscious that it's going to take that to have people come to our city and want to return. One thing my parents always taught me, I certain your parents taught you, and that is be kind and be civil to people. Absolutely. Be courteous to people. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And I know that as I travel all over the country, there are certain cities that I love to go to mm -hmm. uh, because of the kind of treatment that you receive. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> words of wisdom as always from Marsha Maccabee. We know there are people visiting who may be in a hotel room watching this broadcast right now. Yeah. We're glad to have you here. Absolutely. We love you. Absolutely. That's our story from Cleveland. Bye. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.